Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the quiz where knowing the obvious is a disadvantage. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Nicola, and this is my partner, Jill, and we're from Bury, Manchester. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Joe. This is my wife, Wendy, and we're from Bedfordshire. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Alice, and this is my housemate, Tom, and we're from Sheffield. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Miriam, and this is my boyfriend, Shazad, and we're from London. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Lovely to have you here on Pointless, and warm welcome to the show. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Looks like there's a boffin in the offing. It's my Pointless friend, it's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon to you. And to you. How are you? Oh, really well. Excellent. So Nicola well. and Jill, welcome back from the last show. Knocked out in round one. We're going to see more of you this time, I'm sure. Yeah. But we've got three new pairs. That's exciting. That's nice, yeah, isn't it? it is. That yeah. is nice. Yeah. Um, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, now, Michael and Alison went through to the jackpot round last time and they failed to take the jackpot home with them. So we're adding another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £5,750. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. Just remember, at all times, it's the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so just keep your scores low and you have nothing to worry about. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Four-letter words. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second, and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... Words formed by replacing a single letter of the word bean, as they could. Richard? Yep, looking for any word in the English language you can make by just replacing one of those letters with something else. You have to leave the others uh, in the same place and in the same order. So any word in the chamber's dictionary, please, uh, you can get by changing one of those letters. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Jill. Always tough having to go first on these words rounds. Really but is. welcome back to Point. It's lovely to have you with us again. Thank you. Um, tell us more about yourself, Jill. Uh, I work in a betting shop as a deputy manager, and part of that job also includes working away on race course. So oh, that's fun. Do you? I mean, do you still stand with the umbrella? Uh, no, I actually get to work behind the counter in certain parts. So I've been to oh, Aintree as well. Oh, that's fun. During the Grand National Festival a couple of years oh, back. That must be a riot. Yeah, you could say that. It's massive, the amount of people. I, I mean, do you have your own special access? Is um, it like sort of staff at an airport? You can sort of come through the back way. Yeah, we do all get yeah. security checks. Obviously, you yeah, have your badges yeah. to make sure like you're not carrying anything you shouldn't. So there is all yeah. Well, those pens, they just, they just fly, fly away, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. OK, now, Jill, what are you going to go for? Oh, there's quite mm. a few to choose from. Yeah. I'm probably going to go with... Beat, an obvious one, so B-E-A-T, and replace the end. B-E-A-T says Jill. Let's see how many of our 100 people said beat. Beat, down it goes to 42. Gets us off to a solid start. Well, it means all sorts of things, beat, well, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Yeah. It can mean to beat. Yes. A police officer has a beat. Yes. A drummer has a beat. You can beat somebody in a contest. Could Oh, I didn't think of that one. We should set up a dictionary of our own. We really should. Yeah, we should We're, do. We aced that. I think everyone's fairly sure of what beat means now. I think so. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Now, Wendy. Hello. Welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, my name is Wendy. I'm retired. I used to be a strategic advertising manager. Where, where did you do your strategic advertising? With a well-known motor manufacturer based oh. in Bedfordshire. Ah. Ah. Oh. Do, do you miss the strategic advertising with the well-known motor manufacturer? I do. It was, it was a wonderful, wonderful yeah. job. Yeah. Great I fun. would rather do unstrategic advertising because it must be easier. Do you think? Oh. Do you, just random advertising. Okay. Yeah. But, the, but all advertising is strategic. Well, exactly. That's what they're expecting. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, hide in the house. That's the last place they'll look. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, your, right, yeah. that's your school of advertising. Yeah, exactly. I like it. Now, Wendy. Yes. Let's do some strategic letter changing here. What are you going to go for? Well, I had this for breakfast this morning. Bran. Ooh. Oh. Oh, Bran. Let's see how many of our 100 people like that. Mm. There mm. we are. 42 is the only score. And you pass that. Down to 18 with Bran. Beautiful. <laughs> 
That's a very good answer, yes. Named after uh, the colour it is. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Alice, welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Um, I'm Alice and I'm a second year geography student at the University of Sheffield. <laughs> How do you love Sheffield? Uh, it's really nice. I it's not a lovely place. The nicest people, I think, ever. Yeah, I mean, they're just they're so, so friendly. lovely, aren't they? Yeah. Did you know Sheffield at all before you went no, there? No, I the first day I moved was the first day I'd ever been there. And so where are you from? Uh, South Wales. South Wales. Yeah. Very nice. And also the peaks are just there. That's yeah. the peak district right on your doorstep. You should probably say the people in South Wales are lovely as well. Oh, by the way, yeah. the people in South Wales, oh, they are, absolutely. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Um, now, Alice, what are we going to go for? Um, I'm struggling to think about a bit, so I'm going to go for bear. Bear. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people went bear. Well, 42 is the highest score and you pass it. There we are, 34 for bear. You have to carry or support. There's an animal called a bear. Lots of bears. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Thank you. Now, Shazad, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Hi. Tell us all about yourself. Um, so I run a futsal and football coaching business. How many coaches do you have on your, on your staff? Uh, I've only got three of us, so it's a small business. So but, a small um, business, but that's we good. We run a lot of classes, we run about 12 a week. That's amazing. Kids, so, yeah. For all levels, or it's just five kids? To, five to 15 year olds. Five to 15, <laughs> fantastic. Now, Shazad. Yeah. What are we going to go for? Um, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to play a little bit safe and go Beak. Beak. Yeah. Beak says Shazad. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Beak. That goes down to 14. Very well done indeed. That's our best score so far. Well done. Well played, Shazad. Yeah, beak. Again, that's a bird's bill. Mm. Uh, it can also be uh, it's an old magistrate. slang term for a magistrate or yeah. for a school teacher. School teacher, yeah. There's a beak. Yes. That's all yes. I got on beak. Yes, no, I think that's good. That is good. If I look like I'm a bit distracted and I'm not giving you, uh, I'm not giving you the full 100% beam, the full wattage yeah. of my engagement, yeah. it is actually, I've got to confess, it's because every time when I'm not doing this, I'm desperately trying to think of my answer. Yeah, but the good news is everyone at home is doing that as well, so they're not listening to either of us. Yeah. So it's okay. absolutely fine. Yeah. They yeah. literally we could be saying anything. Yeah, this is true. I, what, yes, exactly. Yes. Mm. Um, mm, thank you. Yes. Mm. Thank you. Well, I'll ask you for an answer at the end. Yeah, oh, I hope by then I'll have one. Yeah. Or... Yeah, or I won't. Do your job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one or the other. Yeah. One or the other. Yeah. <laughs> That's my choice. Thank you very much indeed. OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Well, 14 was the best score of the boss. Well done to you, Shazad, Shazad. And Miriam looking pretty strong on the back of that. Then we travel up to 18, where we find Wendy and Joe. Then up to 34, where we find Alice and Tom. And then up to 42, where we find Jill and Nicola. Nicola, you've got time. You've got time to come up with a really lovely low-scoring answer that will get you into round two. Uh, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> there we are. Now, Miriam, welcome to the show. Thank uh, you. Tell us all about yourself. So, I'm a dentist uh, from London. I've been practising for the past eight years now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, dentists... There are some people for whom dentists just makes people go... Ah, just the mention of the mere word. <laughs> That's a tough thing. That's a tough thing. I mean, every dentist has to come to terms with that. It is difficult, you know. yeah. You know. Um, but hopefully I'm a nice enough dentist. And oh, I hope so, welcoming Miriam. Welcoming and warm. Well, exactly. Yeah, it compensates. <laughs> exactly. Now, uh, Miriam, you are on 14. If you can score 27 or less, even at this early stage of the second pass, you're into round two. Remember, we are looking for any new four-letter word we can make by changing one of the letters of beam. My heart's pounding. Um, I don't want to let you down, Shaz. Um, I'm going to replace the B with W. Ween. 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 I don't think you have anything to worry about. I think that's great. Yeah, we, yeah, okay. Well, let's find out. I don't, don't take my word. Don't take yeah. my word for it. There's your red line. Let's see how many of our 100 people said ween. Yeah. It's right. Look at that. Gets you through. Gets you through. Look, 11. It's the lowest score of the round so far, Miriam. Very well done. Picked up the luck to 25. Very well played, Miriam. See, that's the thing. I get nervous going to a dentist. 
you get nervous because you know wean is a word. If you are sitting at home, yeah. you know, to wean a child off yeah. milk and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But the second you're here is absolutely terrifying. It's you go, a game yeah. Wean. Yeah. It sounds like you made it up. Yeah. So, yeah I right. think Miriam would be a terrific dentist, don't you? I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. You get that sense. Yeah. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Tom, welcome to Point. It's good to have you with us. Thank you. Tell us all about yourself, Tom. Uh, I'm a second year architecture student at the don't University of Sheffield. Sheffield. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> Whoa. How wow. do you do that? I do, I, I'm a bit scared. Six by sense. Most. It's a six sense. Amazing. It, you can it tell worries where people go to, go to university. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell where people go to university. It's just an amazing, yeah. slightly random yeah. skill. But a superpower, I will say nonetheless. Lampeter. Good Loughborough. Hmm, goldsmiths, yes. OK, Tom. Um, and you're, you're studying... Architecture. Oh, sorry, I was so dazzled by my... Scared <laughs> by my skill. Architecture. And that's a three-year course or four years? Three years undergrad three years. and then four postgrad. So. Right. Very good. Where are you from originally, Tom? Um, Rotherham. So Sheffield's my home city. Oh, so, I see. Yeah. Oh, well, there we are. That's good. Uh, now, listen, you're on 34, beautifully set up by Alice, which means at this stage we have the game, we need seven or less from you so far. I mean, that's not the end of the world if you go over seven, but... Um, well, I had a risk, um, but it's just been taken. So... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's annoying. But it's kind of good because I didn't know which one to pick, so I'm going to go for Dean. Dean. Let's find out how many of our 100 people said Dean. There is your red line, Tom, quite low. Dean's right. Thirty-five for Dean takes your total up to sixty-nine. Yeah, well played. We tend to use it in a religious context for churches and cathedrals, and in America, it's far more for universities and colleges. They have deans. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Joe, welcome to Point. It's great to have you with us. Tell us all about yourself. So I'm Joe. I'm a travel money bureau manager. So I buy and sell travel money. Travel money bureau manager? Yeah. Do people still use that? Of course. That's interesting. Just to see me. <laughs> I see. Do you work in a place where there's a thick plated glass and they come and you have to pass everything through a yeah. thing under the window? Thick plated plastic now. That all oh, right, plastic. I see. I see, but so you have a cash exchange, so money yeah. changing. Yeah, I yeah. see. Of course they use that. But travellers' checks don't really exist anymore, no, do no. they? Those have They've literally are, gone now. They have literally gone. Joe, there you are. You're on 18. If you can score 50 or less, you are through. Well, everything I sort of had in my mind has gone, so I'm going to have to go for beam. Beam, Yeah. says Joe. Let's see how many of our 100 people said beam. There's your red line. Very well done indeed. Look at that. Down it goes to 28. Takes your total up to 46. Yeah, a large straight piece of timber or a ray of light. In old English, beam was actually a tree. That's your living tree was a beam. Your living tree? Yeah. Wow. And that's quite the opposite. So, very good answer. Well played. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, uh, Nicola. Hi. Nicola, uh, welcome back to Pointless. Uh, remind us all about yourself. Tell us more about Nicola. So, I work in network services, so that's where I'm setting up mobile sims. I look after them and uh, look after telephones also. So, it's all like the technology. Side. The technology behind communication. It's a really good job and I have a fantastic team behind me, so I, I love my job. Good for Aww. you. Very good, and so important as well. It is, yes. Um, and thank goodness someone understands how it works. <laughs> uh, now, Nicola, you're on 42. We are looking for a score of 26 or less from you. So, I've been racking my brain all the way through the round, quite a lot of the ones that I thought I have already gone. Um, I'm going to take a risk, and I'm going to go with B-E-I-N. So B -E -I -N. B -E -I -N. You see, I like that. I like that. Are we sort of building in a little apostrophe on the end? But it might have, yeah. the apostrophe might have been dropped and be in. I'm just hoping it's somewhere within there. It, Do you know what it, it sounds might be? right. Another thing that quite often happens is uh, words from Scottish dialect yeah. make their way into the dictionary. So it could be that be in. Uh, who knows? We, I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out. There's your red line. Can we get you below that with be in? It's right, Nicola. I see round two, I think. Yes, I do. I knew I did. It's a pointless yeah. answer as well. <laughs> Very well done indeed. 
Nicola, that is a point that's answered. Adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to an altogether more round £6,000, scores you nothing, leaves your total at 42 That's just wonderful. Very well done, Nicola. Jill's face was an absolute picture throughout that, <laughs> throughout that whole process. <laughs> Um, yeah, and guess where it comes from? Scottish Scotland. slang. Yeah. yeah. It means uh, well off, comfortable, or well off been. Now, there's very few pointless answers, actually. I'll take you through some low scorers. Uh, we had some good ones. Jean would have scored you 14. Jean is the, um, material. the material. You would have got two points for Bow, B E A U. Nice. That's a good one, isn't it? That's the one I would have probably come up with if I, oh, if, I, if, I yeah. if I hadn't been doing my job. Uh, See, and you did it. <laughs> I'm a martyr. I am a martyr you to my really, duty. Really, you're a number yeah. of things, and a martyr mm. is one of them. Yeah. Uh, one point for Peen, P E A N, and there are four points answers had been there. You could have Geen, which is a European wild cherry. You could have Reen, which is a, a ditch, and Yeen, which is to give birth if you're an animal. To Yeen, you're young. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of our first round. It means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, Tom and Alice. Nothing wrong with your score. Nothing wrong with either of your brilliant answers. They just happen to score more than everyone else. So we say goodbye, but thank you very much for playing. We'll see you again next time, Tom and Alice. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Well done, everybody. Made it through that round. Our category for round two this afternoon is... World history. Can you all decide on that basis? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please, step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... ..historical events that took place at the weekend. Richard. These are historical events that took place at the weekend sometime in history. Um, six on the first board, six on the second board, 12 and all to have a go at home. Very best of luck. It puts a very different and specific complexion on these things. It does. Doesn't it? It does. Well, we'll see. Who knows what these events are, but I will look at them in a different light. Um, and let's look at them in this light, and here they are. We've got six clues. Edward Jenner administered the first ever vaccination as a preventative treatment for this disease, May 1796. Major battle won by forces led by the Duke of Wellington, which brought about the end of the Napoleonic Wars, June 1815. Wanderers beat Royal Engineers 1-0 in the first final of this football competition, March 1872. New York journalist who completed her trip around the world in just over 72 days, January 1890. US naval base that was attacked by Japanese forces leading to the US entering World War II. December 1941, and Russian city in which the Cambridge spies, Guy Burgess and Donald MacLean, surfaced after disappearing in 1951, February 1956. There we are. Now then, Jill. Oh, mm. that's a bit of a tricky board, if I'm honest. I don't know if I actually know any of them, so I'm going to take more of an educated guess mm -hmm. and say... Pearl Harbor for the US Naval Base. OK, Pearl Harbor for the US Naval Base. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Pearl Harbor. Absolutely right. That goes down to 62. Not bad. 62 for Pearl Harbor. Yeah, a baby that will live in infamy, President Roosevelt said. But, yeah, the weekend. Who Thank knew? you very much. Thank you, Richard. Now, uh, Wendy. Yes. Yes, this one. Yes. yes. What are we thinking? I did know one of them. Yes. But, uh... I'm going to have a guess at the second one as Waterloo. Waterloo, surely. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Waterloo. Absolutely right for 1815. 62 is the only score we have at the moment, and you pass it, goes down, you go to 43. Well, played here, yeah, Waterloo Bridge in London, of course, is named after the Battle of Waterloo, but it was being constructed uh, when the Battle of Waterloo happened. And oh, so it was originally going to be called Strand Bridge. Oh, I'm glad we went with Waterloo. I it's think it's more right. lyrical, it's, isn't it? It is more lyrical, I think But it's so, just yes. off the strand, isn't it? So it's that sort of makes sense. Yes. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Shazad. This board is all yours. Um, so the first one, Edward Jenner administered the first vaccination. I would guess at flu, but I'm not going to go with that. Um, Wanderers beat Royal Engineers. I think that's the FA Cup. Russian City. I'd hazard a guess at Moscow, but I'm going to go with the FA Cup. FA Cup for the Wanderers and the Royal Engineers. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the FA Cup. FA Cup is right. 62 is the high score and you pass it. 
43 is the low score, and you pass it down, it goes to 31. Very well done indeed. Uh, yeah, played at the cricket pitch at Kennington Oval, 2,000 spectators, no nets, uh, but you had to go for that with your job, I think. Well done. Exactly. FA Cup. Um, Edward Jenner? I'm going to say smallpox. It's smallpox, yep. That would have scored 24. Now, this New York journalist. No. No, Nelly Bly. Nelly Bly. Nelly Bly. There we go. I'll try uh, and remember. It's a pointless answer. Oh. Very well done if you said that. Uh, and the Russian city, quite right, it was Moscow. And Moscow would have scored 29. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are halfway through the round, so let's have a look at those scores. 31, the best score of the past. Shazad, very well done indeed. Then we travel up to 43, where we find Wendy and Joe. Then up to 62, where we find Jill and Nicola. A little bit ahead there, Nicola. Use the next board wisely. Let's hope there's a lovely low-scoring answer for you. Let's get you into their debt. That'd be nice. Uh, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> Let's put six more clues up on the board to historical events that took place at the weekend. Here we go. We've got... Watson and Crick published their discovery that DNA molecules exist in this twisted ladder structure. April 1953. Treaty signed in a palace on the outskirts of Paris, which formally ended World War I, June 1919. Benefit concert held simultaneously at Wembley Stadium in London and JFK Stadium in Philadelphia, July 1985. Flagship of Henry VIII, which sank during the Battle of the Solent, July 1545. US astronaut who became the first person to set foot on the moon, July 1969. And US athlete who broke five world records in 45 minutes in Ann Arbor, Michigan, May 1935. There we are. Miriam. <laughs> I am pretty sure I know two answers. Um, again, one safer than the other. I'm going to go with the Helix for the Watson and Crick um, published her discovery. OK, Helix. Helix, says Miriam. Here is your red line. Let's see where we end up in relation to that red line with Helix. No, oh, I'm sorry, Miriam. I'm afraid that scores you 100 points. Takes your total up to 131, sorry. Sorry, Miriam. I'll give all the correct answers at the end of the pass. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Joe. You're on 43, 87 or less gets you through. Well, I only actually know two, so I'm going to go for what I think will be the lowest, and that's the Benefit Concert, Live Aid. Live Aid. It says, Joe, here's your red line. Let's see if we can get you below this with Live Aid. Live Aid is right. Very well done indeed. You are through to the head-to-head. -head. That goes down to 47. Takes your total up to a nice round 90. Yep, very well played. Uh, Phil Collins, of course, famously played at both of them. Uh, took yeah. Concord in between the two. Played in London. Took Concord, then played yeah. with Led Zepp in, uh, in the US. Ah, that's very cool. That very was so cool. exciting. There we go, thank you. Very much indeed. OK, now, Nicola. Hi. Nicola, you are on 62. 68 or less gets you into the head-to-head. -head. Donna, talk us through the board. I can try to. So, for the treaty signed in uh, Palace is the Versailles. Uh, US astronaut is Neil Armstrong. I'm going to go with the treaty of Versailles. OK, Treaty of Versailles, says Nicola. Here is your red line. Let's see if we can get you below that with Treaty of Versailles. Let's see. Shouldn't be too much of a stretch, and it isn't. Look at that. Down it goes. Good answer. Scores you 30, takes it up to 92, gets you into the head-to-head. -head. Yeah, well played. Let's fit in this board. Now, Miriam, you're really unlucky. Uh, I mean, it's sort of helix. It was a very specific uh, sort of helix. The double helix is the answer. Would have scored seven points as well. Uh, the flagship... Uh, Mary Rose. Mary Rose, yes, that would have scored you 32. You're quite right about Neil Armstrong. Would have scored you more points than the answer you gave, though. Would have scored 53. Do you know the US athletes? Oh, I wish I did. Uh, Jesse Owens. Ah, there Brilliant. we go. Jesse Brilliant. Owens, and he would have scored 12. So, double helix, best answer on the board. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, at the end of our second round, that means we have to say goodbye to another pair, and I'm afraid uh, Miriam and Shazad, you are that pair. We'll say goodbye to you for now, but we'll see you again next time. Um, thank you very much for playing Miriam and Shazad and playing so well. <laughs> for the remaining two pairs, though, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Congratulations, Nicola and Jill, Wendy and Joe. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at six. 
£1,000. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, shall we see if we can't boost that jackpot a bit by finding a couple of extra pointless answers? Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many types of snake as they could. Richard. Uh, yeah, there's going to be six snakes on the board. Two of them people have heard of, two of them no one had heard of. The other two are fake snakes. Uh, see if you can find the pointless snakes, please. Thank you very much indeed. Here we go. Six potential pointless snakes. Cottonmouth, eyelash viper, elephant trunk snake, Kalahari clatter snake, lumberjack, black king snake. There we are. What do I we think? think? Black king snake. Do you think black king that, snake? That is one, I think. Definitely a shark. I might be wrong. Mouth rings a bell. Does it? Yeah. Cotton mouth Flatter rings snake. a bell. Yeah, lumberjack. It's calamari. Literally sounds like it is what it is. No, like cal calamari. I was thinking, cal is that? But it's calamari. That's what we yeah. were thinking as well. Yeah. <laughs> we could go with the lumberjack. Oh, I know a bit of calamari. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, calamari. Fried calamari. Yeah. Nicola and Jill, what are you going to nominate? You go for. It. I'm going to go for the black king snake. The black king snake. OK, let's see. Is that a pointless snake? Yes, yeah, a snake. I think I'd have heard of a black king snake. Can it go all the way down to zero? Oh, no, it goes down to one. I'm so sorry. Not a pointless answer. So, Wendy and Joe, what are you going to go for? I don't know. Elephant trunk snake, I think, must be a joke. I'm, the, I'm thinking lumberjack, just because it's so unobvious. <laughs> Do you want to go lumberjack, go lumberjack? We're going to go lumberjack. Lumberjack. Let's find out. Is a lumberjack a point of snake? Is it? No, oh, bad luck. Bad luck. There we are. Richard. Uh, yeah, it does sound convincing, but you've fallen into our question setters trap there. Because Who wrote the lumberjack song? Um, Monty no, Python. Monty Python. Yeah, there you go. There Monty we go. Python. Oh. There's, there's your snake connection. Um, now, let's have a little look at some of these. I think uh, I heard somebody say they'd heard of Cottonmouth. I think uh, possibly that, that, that is a scorer, Cottonmouth. Um, the elephant trunk snake is a pointless answer. There really is one. So of these other two, Zander, let's test you, let's test people at home. The eyelash oh. viper and the Kalahari clatter snake. One of those is pointless, oh. one of them is not. Kalahari clatter snake, clatter snake. There's a rattlesnake, there are snakes that make noises. The eyelash viper, I'm tempted to the clatter. Uh, you think the Kalahari clatter snake yeah, I'm gonna is, go for the, that one for uh, is the pointless answer? What do you think at home? Do you think that's the other pointless answer? Let's take a look, shall we? Is the Kalahari clatter snake a pointless answer? Nope. It's a fake answer, I'm afraid. It's the eyelash viper, which is the wow. other pointless one. Uh, thank you. Well, bad luck. We didn't find any pointless answers there, but we all learned a little bit about snakes that we can now forget. Uh, let's play the head to head. Now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot, and you are now allowed to confer. Let's not forget that jackpot is standing at £6,000, so there's a lot riding on this. Best of luck to both pairs. Our first question this afternoon is all about... BAFTA-winning children's TV presenters, Richard. Yeah, five pictures now of uh, presenters or duos who won the Best Presenter Award at the Children's BAFTAs. Can you tell us who these people are, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five pictures of TV presenters or presenting duos, and here they are. A. B. C. D. And E. There we are. Five BAFTA winning children's TV presenters. Nicola and Jill, you will go first. Okay. Probably going to go number C, which I think is Sam and Mark. Sam and Mark for C. Say Nicola and Jill, Sam and Mark. Now, Wendy and Joe. do you want to talk us through that board? Holly Willoughby. We don't know who B is. We don't know who he is either. We recognise him, but we, but we can't think of his name, so we're going to have to go for D, Michaela Strachan. OK, Michaela Strachan for Ds. We have Sam and Mark and Michaela Strachan. Now, Nicola and Jill have gone for Sam and Mark. Let's see if that's right for C. Let's see how many of our 100 said it. Sam and Mark is right. And it's a good answer. Look at that. Down it goes to 15. Very well done indeed. 
Meanwhile, Wendy and Joe have gone for Michaela Strachan for D. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Michaela Strachan. Michaela Strachan, absolutely right. Is it going to... No. Down it goes to 50. There we are. Well done, Nicola and Jill. After one question, you're up 1-0. Yeah, lovely Sam and Mark winning you uh, the point there. You are absolutely right about uh, Holly Willoughby. She's the biggest scorer up there, though. 74 points for Holly Willoughby. Um, the second one, she won in uh, 2017, CBBS presenter Maddie Moat. Very well done if you said Maddie Moat. She's a pointless answer as well. Uh, and the gentleman whose name you can't remember. Just the deadly animal thing. Deadly 60, yeah. Yeah. The brilliant Steve Backshaw. Steve Backshaw. That's right. And Steve would have scored you 14. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, OK, now here comes your second question. Wendy and Joe, you get to answer it first. You've got to win it to stay in the game, so best of luck. Our second question is all about... The Sun. Richard. Yep, five clues now to facts about the sun or sunshine. Thank you. OK, let's reveal our five clues, and here they come. We've got... Common name for the vitamin which is synthesised in the skin when under sunlight. Australian-born publisher who purchased the Sun newspaper in 1969, Scottish music duo whose songs feature in the musical Sunshine on Leith, author of the 1926 novel The Sun Also Rises, published in the UK as Fiesta, and actor and director who founded the Sundance Institute and Film Festival. There we are. Wendy and Joe will go first. What do you want? Any of them? Do you want any of them? Oh, no, I wouldn't go. The Australian-born publisher would be Rupert Murdoch. You're going to go for Rupert Murdoch, who purchased The Sun. Now, Nicola and Jill, do you want to talk us through that board? <sighs> well, I think the common name for the vitamin, which is vitamin D, the Scottish music duo, I have a feeling it might be the Proclaimers, but I'm not sure, and I'm not confident on the bottom two either. It's the only duo that I know, but we could be completely wrong. Exactly. Them. Vitamin D, I think we're going to go for. OK, vitamin D. All right. Um, so we have Rupert Murdoch and we have vitamin D. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Rupert Murdoch, the Australian-born publisher. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Rupert Murdoch is right. That goes down to 34. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nicola and Jill have gone for vitamin D, the uh, vitamin synthesised by the skin. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Vitamin D. Vitamin D goes down to 68. Very well done. Wendy and Joe, you win that point. After two questions, it's one all. Yeah, as you suspected, much too high. What made you lose faith in the proclaimers there as an answer? It was the only one I could think of, but I just wasn't entirely confident that it was the answer, and I got a feeling it. I think it is. Yeah, of course it is. There's oh. no, who, who else is it going to be? 31 points as well would have been a lovely answer. Would have seen you into oh, the final. I'm sorry, because I should have... Listen, I should sometimes, have yeah, sometimes you take a risk, sometimes you don't. It's, uh, it's one of those things, isn't it? Uh, the author of The Sun Also Rises... Ernest Hemingway. Hemingway, yeah, would have scored you two points. Uh, and there's a clue in the Sundance. Robert Redford. Robert Redford, yeah, the Sundance kid. And that would have scored you 12. So best answer on the board, Ernest Hemingway. Well done if you said that. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. And so it comes down to a third question. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Very best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about American football teams. Richard. Yep, we can show you the names now of five American football teams. We'll show you the, uh, the city uh, and then we'll uh, do an anagram of the, uh, the nickname of the team, if you like. So uh, what are these American football teams, please? Whoever gives us the uh, lowest scoring answer is going through to play for that jackpot. Thank you very much indeed. Can you name these American football teams? Here they come. We've got... Pittsburgh, Eels Rest, Carolina, Ten Harps, Miami, Pins Hold, New England, to Tapirs, and Las Vegas, Dear Sir. There we are. Nicola and Jill will go first. Top Hops, the Eels. Uh, probably going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers. OK, Pittsburgh Steelers, say Nicola and Jill. Now then, Wendy and Joe, do you want to talk us through that board? So, Carolina, have no idea. Miami Dolphins. Mm -hmm. uh, Las Vegas, I'm not sure of that one, but we're going to go for the New England Patriots. The New England Patriots. So we have the Steelers and the Patriots. Nicola and Jill went for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Steelers is right. Down that goes to 21. 
21 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now then, Wendy and Joe have got the New England Patriots. Let's see if that's right. How many of our 100 people said that? Patriots is right. This is going to be close, and the Patriots wins it. Down it goes to 19. Very well done indeed. And it means, Wendy and Joe, after three questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Yeah, very well played. It's a good American football score as well, 21-19. Um, Six-time Super Bowl champions all in the 21st century, the Patriots. I'll go through the rest of them in uh, uh, order of the uh, biggest scorer first. You're quite right about the Miami Dolphins. Um, the Dolphins would have scored you 33. Uh, next up is Las Vegas. Can you work that out? Raiders. Raiders. Las Vegas Raiders would have scored you 11. And the best answer on the board, can you work it out? It is an animal. It is a big cat. Panthers. Carolina Panthers, absolutely. Um, and that would have scored you five points. Well done if you said the Panthers. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Oh, Nicola and Jill, that's just annoying. That's cruel. It's <laughs> just annoying because really you thanks. had the proclaimers there. We say goodbye to you now. We'll see you again next time. We'll see you again next time. Nothing lost at all. We'll see you again next time. We look forward to that very much. Uh, Nicola and Jill, thank you for playing. But for thank Wendy and Joe, it is now time for the pointless final. Congratulations, Wendy and Joe. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> Let us put all thoughts of the trophy to one side, though, because you now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £6,000. <laughs> and that's a jolly nice-sized jackpot to be taking back with you. Um, what do you want to see come up in this last round? Uh, for me, it will be Rocky Horror, Carry On Films, Motorhead, if you've got a category there. OK, OK, yes. I like all of these. Good. <laughs> Wendy, what about you? Um, all of those would come because he's very passionate about them, so that would be good. I'm a bit of a jack-of-all-trades, so... OK, jack-of-all-trades is even better. Yes. That's great. You've got everything covered. It's good to be passionate about Motorhead and Carry On. <laughs> it's quite a... That's a what? Venn diagram. You, you've got a lot of space in. And the Rocky Horror Show as yeah. well. I mean, my... Goodness. OK, well, first thing you have to do is choose a category from the four we put up on the board. Let's put those four up and see what we can offer you. Switzerland, Glaswegian pop, the titles of spy novels, decades of golf majors. What do we think? Ooh. We don't know anything about golf. Don't really read spy novels. Right. Well, I'll let you choose. Go on, you choose. Be it in your hand. Well, I don't know anything about Switzerland. So we go so Glaswegian pop. Go we go Glaswegian pop. Glaswegian pop, OK. OK, very best of luck. We're looking for any UK Top 40 single, please, up to August 2020 by any of the following three bands. Any UK Top 40 hit by Travis, by Della Mitri, or by Wet, 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 please. So UK Top 40 hits by those three bands, according to the official charts company. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Oh, so wet, 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 wet. There's that finger in it. Is that love, love it all around? around. Um, um, sweet little mystery. Sweet little mystery, then, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, they're not going to be pointless. Travis, I don't really know. Travis. Stella Mitchell, I don't really know. Did Travis do um, sit down? Well, Try we can try it. it. Try it. Yeah, but um, that's not probably wet, not going to be pointless either. It must be more wet, wet ones, ones you know, if I you can't stir mine back to our, our youth. I can only remember Sweet Little Mystery. Sweet Little Mystery. Oh, we're going to be so cross when we see them. Yeah. I know I am. Yeah. Uh, I really don't know. I really don't know. Delamitri, I really don't know anything at all. No, I don't know anything Travis. about Delamitri. Travis, I'm trying to think of another couple. Ten seconds left. Yeah. Well, what, so what, what we'll three have we got? We, we've got Sweet Little Mystery. And then... Um... And that, I'm afraid, is your time up. Let's have your three answers now. And you can say which category you're answering in. So we're going to go for Travis, which I think is called Sit Down. OK, Sit Down. Wet, Wet, Wet. Sweet Little Mystery. Sweet Little Mystery. And 
I'm afraid it's going to have to be Love is All Around. And Love is All Around from Wet, Wet, Wet. OK, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Sweet Little Mystery. Sweet Little Mystery goes last. Least likely to be pointless? Uh, sit down, Travis, because I'm not down. sure whether it's right. And then Love is All Around we put yeah. in the middle. Yeah. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order. And here they are. We have got Sit Down, Love is All Around, Sweet Little Mystery. Well, you never know in these last rounds. You never know. Sometimes there are little surprises in there. Uh, what would you do if you won that jackpot? 6,000 quid? That'd be a lovely jackpot to take home. Wendy? I think we would, uh, we're going to go on a, a nice holiday on a long, on, on a narrow boat. Oh. That would be lovely. That would be nice. Uh, Joe? Well, I will think I'll go with her. <laughs> OK, well, that seems yeah. reasonable enough. OK, well, let's hope one of these answers wins it for you. Uh, sit Down's your first answer. We're looking for Travis UK Top 40 singles. Let's see if Sit Down's right. Let's see if it's pointless for 6,000 quid. No, I'm afraid. Not Travis, I'm afraid. Uh, not a pointless answer. Let's move on to Love Is All Around. We're now on to Wet, Wet, Wet for the last two answers, in fact. They're both Wet, Wet, Wet. Love Is All Around. How many of our 100 people said that? For 6,000 pounds, is it pointless? Well, it's right. No surprises there. I think we knew that was right. Uh, it just has to go all the way down to zero if you'd win that jackpot. Now going down through the 30s into the 20s. 28. 28, 28 for love is all around. But we now move on to slightly, uh, slightly more uh, obscure ground here with sweet little mystery for wet, wet, wet. Is it a pointless answer for £6,000? Well, it's right. Your first answer sit down was incorrect. Love is all around, took us all the way down to 28. Now, Sweet Little Mystery takes us down through the teens into single figures, still going down seven for Sweet Little Mystery. That's a good answer. <laughs> a lovely score, single figures there, but I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot, but you win today's trophies. Hey. So you can take those proudly back with you, and uh, you've been fantastic on the show. Only one appearance on the show as well, straight through to the final. So uh, that's a great, very strong performance. Uh, yes, yeah, Sit Down was by... James. James, uh, ah. of course. Um, let's take a look, shall we, at the Travis Pointless Answers. Travis's Greatest Hits is a good album. I mean, mm. all their albums are good albums. But uh, Coming Around, Love Will Come Through, Reoffender was a pointless answer. That was a top ten hit. Tied to the 90s, one of their early songs was a uh, pointless answer. Selfish Gene, a pointless answer. All I Want to Do is Rock, Walking in the Sun as well. All of those are pointless answers. Why Does It Always Rain On Me was the, uh, the biggest scorer for them. Um, Delamitri, some of their biggest hits on uh, this board. Always the last to know is a pointless answer. Don't come home too soon. That was their Scottish World Cup song from 1998. Move away, Jimmy Blue, Spit in the Rain as well. Everything apart from Roll to Me, Nothing Ever Happens and Driving with the Brakes on. All the other top 40 hits were pointless answers. Well done if you said one. And finally, Wet, Wet, Wet. Um, Hold Back the River is pointless if I never see you again. Julia says that was a follow-up to Love is All Around. Sweet Surrender. Pointless answer. Uh, all I want is a pointless answer. Don't want to forgive me now. She's all on my mind somewhere, somehow. Uh, strange and weightless. Also pointless answers. Well done, if you said any of those. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. And thanks, Wendy and Joe. I'm sorry you didn't win the jackpot today. That'll therefore have to roll on to the next show when we will be playing for £7,000. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>